the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing when your time has come it also means every closed door must open please be serious tonight let your heart be open in the name of Jesus anyone under the sound of my voice for as long as you are connected here in the name of Jesus if there is a door that has been closed by witchcraft hear me close by the manipulations of men in the name of Jesus that door opens now 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 hallelujah seven and i'm seeing fire coming on their hands physically physically and the lord is telling me for some of you by this impartation jobs even jobs you did not apply for your hand is a symbol of productivity right now eight of them i don't know where you are may that fire locate your hands locate your hands in the name of jesus compelling productivity compelling productivity compelling productivity compelling productivity in the name of jesus christ hallelujah all this my footballer friends come your lifting has come oh, oh, oh. Listen to me, gentlemen, listen to me, listen to me. You see, I want, I want, let me have your attention. Do you know why I'm praying for you? I'm not praying for you because you are lifting your football boots up. And I'm not lifting, praying for you because you like football, no. We're in a season where God is releasing envoys and sending people across strategic places listen to me the purpose of the lifting of the saints is not just for fame the purpose of the lifting of the saints is not just for noise are we together there are many of you as ordinary as you are because in addition to your skill you have recognized that there is a grace that comes upon men i want to release something upon your life you will marvel you don't have to kneel father these gentlemen have come they want to go to the sports in the name of Jesus the apostolic has the mandate an anointing will come on you now and by this anointing may you go to the nations are you ready at the count of three one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now take that anointing now in the name of Jesus Christ May that anointing take you to the nations. May that anointing take you to the nations. You will become voices in the area of sports. You will love Jesus and you will serve him. You will bring many to the fold in the name of Jesus Christ. And hear me. I want you to believe that what has come upon you tonight will truly change your life forever. Hallelujah. You believe this? 
This is more than just excelling in career. You are a footballer? Bring this small boy up for me. Look at this. Look at the little boy. Come. And he's small. What? Don't just bring these children. Don't waste our time, oh, please. I hope the children know what we are doing. If you're a parent here and we call a case, make sure your child is aware of what we're doing, please. You're a footballer. Who brought this child? Who is a parent? Parents, where are you? You are his sister. He's a footballer. How old is he? He's eight years. What's his name? Huh? Derek. What's that, Derek? What's that, Derek? You want to play football? You love Jesus? You too, you want to play football? Huh? Who brought these ones? They, do they want to play football? <laughs> Don't give your parents heart attack. Oh. Some of your parents are planning to have uh, doctors and engineers. That doesn't mean that football is not good. Who brought this child? Your, your son? You want, you're the father? Yeah, yeah. He wants to play football. Oh, you're the parents. Oh, you are aware that the children are here. That's just what I needed to verify. Listen, do you know when children love God and seek Him at this age, it is beyond holding the football boot. It's a miracle. I pray that God will bless you. I pray that God will bless you. And my footballer friend, may God take you high. You will play for the king. In the name of Jesus. Every one of you will come back and testify here. In Jesus name I pray. Return back to your seat rejoicing. God bless you. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will kick down. No shadow you will light up. No shadow you will light up. No you will light up. No wall you will keep down. No wall you will keep down. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I wrote three scriptures here in the place of prayer that the Lord gave me. Let me speak over your life. Number one, Job chapter 5 and verse 12. Let me just speak it over your life very quickly. Media help us. Job 5. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Hear me. Anybody who does not mean well for you, may their hands never come close to your destiny. Psalm 7, 15 and 16. These three scriptures came to me in the place of prayer. I was not even praying about them. They just came to my spirit. He made a pit and digged it and is falling into the ditch which he made. Verse 16. His mischief shall return upon his head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pit. Please hear me. In this season, may the God of vengeance, may the God who is able to judge, may he bring judgment to the works of the wicked over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Last scripture, Isaiah 54, 17. Popular scripture, but it came to my spirit in the place of prayer. Isaiah 54, 17. It says no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper so everything is looking for prosperity including the devil including weapons they want to prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn the Bible says this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me i want to pray for you if any mouth must speak about you let it be for good yeah. one more time if any tongue must speak about you let it be for good yeah. every counsel of ahitophel towards your helpers 
to manipulate them so that they do not treat you with favor in the name of Jesus we overturn this night by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ Makata branda gata prate kete kete pere kete. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Pray and stretch in the spirit. Hela kata pras kete frende ke paraka toshka libara hasia. Empregate parakata babakata parakata lekete Shananda skatena daskate braskati lakasia Imprekate parakata proska zekete beleketa In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One last prayer point. Don't be tired. You are making an investment for your destiny. You are going to lay your hands on your head and say, The glory of my destiny, show forth. The glory of my destiny, show forth. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands and decree and declare. This is the season where the glory of my destiny must show forth. I lay my hands on my head as a token of my glory. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. Someone pray. The glory of my destiny. The glory of my call, the glory of my assignment. Hear the word of the Lord. This is the season when you shine forth, show forth, manifest. Pray. The glory of my destiny Show forth Show forth Show forth Show forth in the name of Jesus, show forth the glory of my destiny. Show forth by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, if you pay attention to all the spiritual exercises and the activities tonight, you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes. Listen, this is how great men are made. There is no other way. This is a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. 
Tomorrow, if anybody tells you you were just lucky, tell them there is no such thing as luck. There is a cup you are drinking and there is a baptism you are being baptized with. I feel in my spirit to add one more prayer request. The Bible says, and when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. You are going to pray. My spiritual capacity, hear the word of the Lord for tonight enlarge until you can carry the mantle of my destiny enlarge enlarge my capacity for the prophetic my capacity for evangelism my capacity to receive the mantle of favor enlarge by the power of the holy ghost i borrow vessels in the spirit i borrow not a few Enlarge, 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 capacity to hear, enlarge, capacity to see, enlarge, capacity to speak, enlarge. And enlarge by the power of the Holy Ghost, enlarge. My spiritual capacity I stretch you By the power of the Holy Ghost I stretch my hunger I stretch my expectation From the depth of your heart. Shade balaga da prada ga da bros kuto balash. E prada ga da prada ga da karaba shalaga ta. Manda prada ga da prada ga te. In the name of Jesus. 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 Please listen to me. There are five major reasons. And there are five major expectations. That you must have. Every time you come into the presence of God. Whenever God calls for a solemn assembly. It is because he seeks to do five things. Ah. There's such a cloud in this place, my God. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this place. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this place. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills my life. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this place. So fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, 
Feel me up Till I overflow I want to run over I want to run over Feel me up Till I overflow I want to run Now listen, every time you come before the God of heaven, the first reason why he draws you to himself and to a place like this is to give you life-transforming encounters. Life-transforming encounters. Let me define for you what an encounter is. An encounter is a supernatural experience that makes God become real to you. Knowing a theoretical God will not do you much as far as destiny is concerned. Because when you stand before Pharaoh, he will ask you who sent you. And you cannot tell Pharaoh about a theoretical God. You must tell him about a God you have met. The first reason why God draws us to himself at moments like this is to give you encounters so that like apostle peter you will say the things that we have seen the things that we have heard the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we teach number two the second reason why god draws us to himself at times like this is to give us an opportunity for transformation what's the pray Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Now the Lord is that spirit, it says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God. It says we are changed from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of God. So moments like this are supernatural moments that are sponsored by a desire to have transformation in your life. Number three, and that is the major reason why we are here tonight, is that when God calls a people to himself in a solemn assembly like this, he wants to reveal his grace and his power. The revelation of the power of God is very important. It says, Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and even for his wonderful works to the children of men. That he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Listen, a generation that does not know the power of God will not be able to defend the name of Jesus. Everyone must know what the power of God looks like. Not just the word of God. Not just the message. Our fathers who left us this heritage were not just people who heard about God. They saw his raw power on display. And it was on the strength of that that they could live and die for Jesus. There are levels of the power of God you must see in your life. You must know that he heals. You must know that he delivers. It's not enough to hear that he heals. You must see that he heals. It's not enough to hear that he can lift men. You must see that he can lift men. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Not just oh, hear and assume. Taste and see. I believe in Jesus Christ today because number one, the word of God says so. But in all honesty, I will tell you, I have seen God do spectacular things in my life and in the life of people. God wants you to leave this camp with a level of certainty about God. That when they tell you God can change a man's story, no devil can turn your heart against that truth. Because you have not only heard, 
you have seen. Why do we need miracle signs and wonders? Because there are needs in our lives that only the power of God can solve. There are needs in our lives that go beyond counseling. There are needs in our lives that go beyond advice. We need a head-on collision with the power of the Most High. Mary said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel replied and said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Why do you need an encounter with the power of God? Because there are devils and there are demons and there are spirits determined to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Many of us here, you come from families where you are the first person to rise to this level. And let me tell you, without the power of God, what happened to those who went before you will happen to you too. Psalm 66 verse 3 Say unto God How terrible art thou in your ways Through the greatness of thy power Shall thy enemies submit themselves to you Even so Come Yeshua come Even so Come and take your bride away how my soul longs to see your face, my King. Even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. What is the fourth reason why God draws us to himself? I will tell you. The fourth reason why he calls us to himself is to give us an opportunity to receive an impartation of his grace hallelujah impartation what is impartation impartation is the transference of spiritual possibilities the possibilities of the kingdom that come by the grace of god can be transferred that means you can leave this camp with an anointing you did not come with you can leave this camp with a mantle you did not come with. And people will look at you and say, when did Saul also become one of the prophets? Can I tell you this? You must expect to carry something this night that you were not born with. You must expect to carry something on your destiny this night. I can tell you specific moments in my life when certain graces came. I knew when they came and I knew the difference they made in my life. When the mantle and the grace for favor comes on your life, you will know. When the healing anointing comes on your life, you will know. When the grace for revelation comes upon your life, you will know. When the grace for the prophetic comes upon your life, you will know. When the grace that was upon Esther comes on your life, you will know. Now listen carefully. Because we are going to get into a very deep moment of, of ministration and impartation. You